In this video, we're diving into one of the coolest tricks in circuit analysis, the superposition theorem. Let's kick things off with a simple analogy. Imagine four kids, each holding a bag of balls. They're told to toss as many balls as they like into three different baskets. Each kid might throw a different number into each basket. It's totally up to them. Now, if you want to know how many balls ended up in each basket, you've got two options. You could just count the total balls in every basket, or you could ask each kid exactly how many they added to each one and then add it all up. Either way, you get the same final result. The idea is simple. If you know how much each person contributes, you can sum up those contributions to get the total. Seems too easy, right? But that's exactly the magic behind the superposition theorem. So what does this mean for circuits? The superposition theorem says this. If your circuit has multiple power sources, you don't need to handle them all at once. Just take one source at a time, solve the circuit with only that one active, and then add up all the results. That's it. We use the superposition theorem when a circuit has more than one power source, voltage sources, current sources, or both. Instead of analyzing the whole mess at once, we figure out what each source does on its own, then combine the effects. Let's walk through a real example. Suppose we want to find the voltage across a 4-ohm resistor in a circuit that has both a voltage source and a current source. Now, technically, we could solve the entire circuit at once using Kirchhoff's laws, but that can get pretty messy. Luckily, superposition gives us a smarter path. Instead of juggling everything at once, we break it down and handle one source at a time. So that's what we'll do. Focus on just one power source, see how it affects the 4-ohm resistor, then move on to the next. When we focus on one source, we turn off all the others. Let's start with the voltage source. To isolate it, we need to deactivate the current source. That means setting its current to zero, turning it into an open circuit. Basically, we just disconnect that branch. Now with only the voltage source active, the circuit becomes much simpler. We could use the voltage divider rule here, but let's go step by step. The two resistors, 8 ohms and 4 ohms, are in series. That gives us a total resistance of 12 ohms. Using Ohm's law, we find the current through the loop. Now that we know the current, we can easily find the voltage across each resistor. So the voltage source alone contributes 2 volts across the 4 ohm resistor. We're not done yet. There's still one more power source to analyze, the current source. To isolate it, we deactivate the voltage source by setting its voltage to zero. That turns it into a short circuit, a simple wire connecting two points. Now, when the voltage across a branch is zero, it might seem like that part of the circuit does nothing. But don't forget, current can still flow through it. So we don't remove it, we short it. With the voltage source shorted, the circuit simplifies to a current source in two resistors. 8 ohms and 4 ohms, connected in parallel. Let's find their total resistance. It's 8 over 3 ohms. Now we can calculate the voltage across this parallel network using Ohm's law. So the current source contributes 8 volts across the 4 ohm resistor. Now that we've seen how each source contributes on its own, it's time to bring it all together. According to the superposition theorem, in a linear circuit, the voltage across, or the current through, any element is just the sum of the contributions from each independent source acting alone, with all other sources turned off. So let's add things up. The voltage source gave us 2 volts. The current source gave us 8 volts. Total voltage across the 4 ohm resistor, 2 plus 8 equals 10 volts. And just like that, we've solved the circuit using the superposition theorem. Still curious? You can always double check the result using Kirchhoff's laws. It'll give you the same answer. Let's quickly go over the steps for using the superposition theorem. Step one, identify all the independent power sources. These are voltage or current sources not controlled by anything else in the circuit. Step two, activate one source at a time and deactivate the others. Replace voltage sources with short circuits zero volts. Replace current sources with open circuits zero amps. Step three, Calculate how the active source affects the part of the circuit you're interested in. Step four, add up all the individual results to get the final answer.
That wraps up today's video. In future episodes, I'll show you how to apply superposition to more complex circuits with multiple branches, more components, and a few interesting twists.